What is going on everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So there are a lot of videos all over the internet on how to build a good credit score, but today I wanna specifically focus on how you can recover from having bad credit. Because in my opinion, that is just as, if not more important than building your credit score from the ground up. And remember that having a high credit score could save you thousands and thousands of dollars in the future since you'll qualify for the lowest interest rates on your loans. Plus having a low credit score means that you might not even get approved in the first place. So if your credit score is in the mid 600s or lower, or even if you already have a decent credit score, be sure to watch this video to the end because we'll cover a lot of great information on how to recover from bad credit and maintain a high credit score. If you do enjoy today's video, I would appreciate it so much if you hit the like button and subscribe and let's jump right into it. So first, I think it's really important to set a realistic goal and know that this isn't something that's gonna happen overnight. It takes time to analyze what is wrong, make those necessary changes, and see these changes positively impact your credit score. So just go into this knowing that it'll take some time and you need to be patient. But starting now means you can start building up your credit score and be prepared for the next time you go to apply for a large loan. So the first thing you need to do is obviously run your credit report and figure out what exactly is causing your credit score to be so low. Personally. I love Credit Karma, but there are plenty of other services like Credit Sesame and a lot of credit card companies that will also offer credit reporting services. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you go with. You just need to have your credit report and figure out what exactly is causing your low credit score. Just make sure that you never pay for a credit report because there are so many fantastic free services out there. Now, remember that you can run your credit report three times per year since you get one report from each of the three major reporting agencies. Once you run a report, you probably have a low credit for one of the following three reasons. Typically, it's because you either don't have a lot of credit, you have some sort of late payment or consistent late payments, or worst of all, you have an account that is in collections, meaning you haven't paid on it for at least 150 days or more. If your debt has gotten to the point that it's in collections, then the original institution who issued you this credit has probably sold it to a debt collection agency for pennies on the dollar. And now they are simply trying to make a profit on your financial difficulty. So let's break down each of these issues and lay out a course of action that can help you fix these problems ASAP. First off, we have late payments, which is one of the most common issues that causes a low credit score. Since your on-time payment history is the most important factor of your credit score, which makes up 35% of your score. So the first and most obvious thing that you should do is obviously pay off these late payments if you do have late payments. Now, maybe this is easier said than done, but at the very least, you can contact the institution that holds your debt and try to negotiate some sort of payment plan if you aren't able to pay it off in full right now. Typically payments aren't viewed as late until they are 30 days past due. So if you owed a credit card payment on July 1st, for example, then this wouldn't typically be marked as late until the end of July. So once you're able to pay off these late debts, whether that be through a payment plan or just paying it all off at once, which I promise you is definitely the best option, you wanna call your creditor and ask if they can remove these late payments from your report. I know this may sound a little sketchy and unrealistic, but keep in mind that the lenders make the most money on people who aren't that good with their finances. So you may be surprised by their ability to bend over backwards in order to make you happy and keep your account in good standing. If you are a perfect borrower who pays off your credit cards on time, for example, and knows how to properly use your credit card benefits, then the credit card company is not making a dime from you in interest. So if you're a borrower who is typically a little late on your payments, then they wanna keep your account in good standing since they're making money on your interest payments. So just call them up and ask if they can remove those late payment marks from your report, since otherwise they will typically stay on your report for seven years, which is the last thing you wanna have to deal with. The next common issue that causes your credit to be so low is maxed out accounts, which simply means that you're spending all of the credit that is available to you. So let's say you have a credit card that has a $3,000 limit and you spend $2,900 of that. Well, that is nearly a 97% credit card utilization rate, which is absolutely horrible and is definitely the cause of your low credit score. Typically, you wanna keep your credit utilization below 10%, and this really is important since your credit utilization makes up 30% of your overall credit score. Now, 
on a $3,000 credit limit, this does not mean that you can only spend $300 at a time because your utilization rate is not reported until your statement actually arrives. So as long as you pay off whatever you have spent before the statement arrives, then your utilization rate will actually remain at 0%. For example, I used to flip electronics and at the time I had one credit card that had a $5,000 limit and I would consistently max out that card, but I would sell the electronics before my statement arrived and would use the profits to pay off the card in full, meaning my credit utilization actually remained at 0%, but I was still able to rake in hundreds of dollars in cash back by using the credit card. So it's okay if you go above that 10% threshold, just make sure you pay it off immediately in order to keep your utilization low. Now your other alternatives, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is to increase the amount of credit available to you. Obviously, if you have poor spending habits and are consistently maxing out your credit card knowing that you don't have the money to pay it off, then please do not go apply for another line of credit. However, the reporting agencies don't care about how much you spend, they simply care about what percentage of your total available credit is being spent. So by increasing your available credit, this will automatically decrease your utilization since your spending is a smaller percentage of the total credit available to you. So if you had a $1,000 limit and spent $1,000, then your utilization would be 100%, which is terrible. But if you increased your credit limit to $10,000, then that $1,000 in spending would only be a 10% utilization of your total available credit. So by applying for another credit card or calling your credit card company and asking for an increased limit, you can almost instantaneously improve your credit card utilization rate and therefore improve your credit score. But please be responsible and don't apply for a credit card just to pay off your current credit card debt because clearly this means there is a more serious spending problem that needs to be addressed in another way. So now that you've fixed your late payments and have improved your credit utilization, your credit score should really start to improve pretty rapidly since these are the two most important factors when calculating your credit score. However, there is one more really important issue that is probably a lot more common than you may think, and that is accounts in collection. Now, if you have an account in collection, you probably know about it already, I hope, but be sure to look at your credit report carefully because there are sometimes some errors that you can and should dispute. So just like a late payment, an account in collection stays on your credit report for seven years at least, and can be extremely damaging to the health of your credit. Now, this usually only happens when you haven't made a payment in 150 days or more, and that's usually the point when the person who holds your debt sells it to a collection agency for pennies on the dollar, and then you'll start getting calls from a debt collector making all sorts of ridiculous threats. So if you've gotten to this point, then paying off your debt in full is probably not an option, since if it was, I would hope you would have done that already. The good news is that the debt collector is just trying to make a profit, and they probably bought your debt for 10 to 20 cents on the dollar, so as long as they can get anything above that, they'll probably accept an offer and leave you alone. So what this means is if you had $100,000 in debt and you completely stopped paying on it, then your lender probably sold this to a collections agency for ten dollars to $20,000. So you could come in and make an offer for thirty dollars to $40,000 and they would probably accept it since they know that they're not going to get that full $100,000 and they just want to make a profit. Now you definitely want to talk to a bankruptcy attorney and figure out what the best course of action is for you, but it's very rare that a debt collector will expect you to pay off the entire amount. And once you do reach an agreement, they will probably leave you alone and you can then file a dispute with the credit reporting agency to see if you can get this collection removed from your credit report entirely. Like I said, this sort of thing typically stays on your account for seven years, but once the debt collector gets their money, they probably won't even waste their time responding to the reporting agency. And if the reporting agency doesn't get a response within 30 days, then this will be viewed as an error and will be completely removed from your report. You especially want to try this if you have any sort of bankruptcy or foreclosure, since having this on your report will make make it very, very difficult to get approved for any sort of mortgage or even just apply for an apartment since they will view you as a very risky lender regardless of what your credit score is. Obviously, this is a shot in the dark and it doesn't always pan out this nicely, but it is worth a try and it won't hurt your credit score any further. So it is possible that there are other issues outside of these three most common problems. So it's really important that you sit down with an expert and figure out exactly what is wrong with your credit report. But these are definitely the three most common problems 
problems that I have seen that will cause you to have a poor credit score. Remember that this isn't going to happen overnight, but by removing those late payments, improving your credit utilization, and disputing any errors on your credit report, you really can improve your credit score by several hundred points, which could save you thousands and thousands of dollars when you do go to apply for a large loan in the future. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below, and I am more than happy to give you my unprofessional opinion. Also, don't forget to use the link in the description to get your $75 when you open a SoFi Invest account and $25 when you open a SoFi Money account, which are both completely free. And this really is the best online investing and banking platform in my opinion. So be sure to use that link in the description to get $100 for free since it literally takes five minutes. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you did enjoy today's video and wanna see more content like this in the future. Thank you so much for your time. I seriously appreciate it so much. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.